Ачала! What's up, everybody out there in YouTube land? Wrath2501 here. All right, guys. So this is something that was suggested after I did the two videos of which uh, Punch-Out Fighter is the biggest cheater. And this is by the same guy, Bumbles McFumbles. And this is which Team Fortress 2 Mercenary is the biggest war criminal. This is like perfect, man. This is like epic as shit. So let's see who actually is the worst. I get the feeling, okay, let's just put this right here. Who thinks it's Soldier? Because I'm pretty sure it's Soldier. <laughs> so let's get started. And go. Bonk. Yeah. Oh, it could be Pyro. Pyro could be in a good running, too. Oh, or Medic. Okay, the top three are Pyro, Medic, Team Soldier. Team 2 might have sneakily become one of the most influential games of all time. Yeah, Everyone's pretty much. Ever heard of TF2 or sunk a decent amount of time into it. Or both. Game or a bit of gameplay. You might have even played a game with TF2's fingerprints all over it. Like, oh god. Any team based shooter in the last decade. Exactly. Yet as they come and go, TF2 persists. Why is exactly. that? Exactly. Is it the because it's gameplay? awesome? The sleek and appealing visual style? The constant support from Valve? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nah, but seriously, what I think makes TF2 stand head and shoulders above the rest of its genre is its character. Other team-based shooters will give you characters with deep and complex motivations as to why they're fighting, intricate character webs that try to tie together a massive world with just a few representatives. TF2 is about nine people who vaguely tolerate each other when not outright insulting one another. Scotland yep. is not a real country! You are an Englishman with a dress! I am ah. owning you, you fat, bald, fatty, fat... Fat, fat. This is Scout. Rainbows make me cry. <laughs> you got a Boston bad boy with a penchant for doing more damage with his mouth than with his gun. A True. Australian who's just as likely to turn your brains into wallpaper as he is to piss on you. And yeah. a black Scottish cyclops who can one-two combo you with explosive grenades into Claymore. All of these characters have endeared themselves to the general public to the point that you might <laughs> forget the fact that each and every one of them is a violent sociopath who's <laughs> killed before and will kill again. Yeah, I feel like the babification of these men... Probably because I'm a dangerous sociopath with a long history of violence. Killers, ...and in some cases deliver a fate worse than death. Yeah. So I got to thinking... Which TF2 character has committed the most war crimes? <laughs> oh, this is gonna be good. Now, the label of a war crime sounds really heavy, but trust me, when we get into the specifics, these people are earning them like candy. Yeah. <laughs> so to lay some what? groundwork, we're going to go out the definition of war crimes as defined by the Red Cross. See, if we go into exactly which crime each merc commits, it's going to be kind of difficult. For instance, it's illegal in war to shoot an enemy who has shown themselves to be of no threat without a way to defend themselves. At the end of every round of TF2, the opposing team is made to be big crybabies who you can mow down at your leisure. Yeah. It's also a big no-no to fire on medical personnel. And that would just make pocketing soldiers and heavies even harder to deal with. <laughs> so I can't feasibly measure each war crime in terms of action... What about the only other thing that has as much personality as our beloved mercenaries? Their weaponry! In the rules of war outlined by the Red Cross, there are 11 distinct classes of weaponry that are not allowed in war. We'll go over uh -huh. them at a time and judge their loadouts based on what weapons they possess that would be counted as Ooh, war crime. Nice. First up is serrated weapons. Serrated weapons like a modified bayonet cause undue suffering to someone unlucky enough to be stabbed with them, and as such, they're banned from conventional warfare. Really? Now, the exact definition on what counts as serrated is a little hard, but I feel confident in my ability to use my eyes that I can tell you which is which. First person to break the rule is Pyro with a sharpened volcano fragment. Ah! Yes, to TF2 fans, you must be asking how the volcano fragment is considered a crime in any other realm other than game design. Well, those ridges along the blade mean that whatever little more damage is done is more uh. than necessary. After that, we skip a whole three classes as Medic comes next. The stock bone saw and amputator are both by nature serrated. Yeah. They are saws after all. The use of such equipment is already contentious, but for this rule, it's even worse. Sniper's Tribesman Shivs and Spy's Black Rose both fail in this category, which means that Medic leads the pack with two, with Pyro, Sniper, and Spy all tied for second. That is, except for the secret bonus war crime, thanks to the all-classes item, Pretty Blade. 
thanks to Disgaea, everyone here is getting an extra what? 20 years at least added to their prison sentences. What the hell? After that is barbed weapons. While you normally associate barbs with barbed wire, the definition of barbs is simply an additional piece of metal that assists in the tearing of flesh. So for something like, say, oh, Scout's yeah. Boston Basher, that would be a barbed bat seeing as those spikes aren't meant for hitting home runs. As well, yeah. the sun on a stick has a bunch of nasty spikes Ooh, for filling yeah, some with more holes than a casual pub team's forward push. Ooh. Soldier and Demo both earn one for the pain train, which they share between each other. If a giant railroad spike was enough to punch a hole in a human body, the bunch of jagged, bent nails would definitely send the right message. Pyro yeah. has the obvious one of the axe extinguisher. It's very literally just an axe with barbed wire wrapped around it. <laughs> but I'm willing to stretch the definition of barbed for the back scratcher given the fact that raking with a rake will happen whether you mean it to or not. For Heavy, I really went back and forth on if the warrior's spirit counted since it's bear claws that will definitely tear up the body, but they're not metal. No. Ultimately, I gave it to him since it's not like he's going to do much with those 20 years of freedom anyway. He was also going to get it anyway for the eviction notice being a pair of spiked brass knuckles. Finally, NG's Southern Hospitality has incredibly useless spikes on the side that have no chance of ever hitting somebody. But it shows up in the kill icon, so it counts. Okay. Classes escape crime free. We can actually eliminate the next three categories as they revolve around expanding ammunition, explosive rounds, and poison. For all the weapons in the game, what? none of those descriptions fit. Demo's pipe bombs aren't round, they're lobbed projectiles, so they land in a whole different group altogether. What is illegal, however, is a weapon meant to inflame your wounds. What exactly this means in terms of TF2 is a little hard to define, but I narrowed it down to the few items that make your opponent take Ooh. more damage. First is beloved returning madman Pyro and his gas passer. This dented gas can is actually breaking the laws of warfare by making your opponent take more damage from Pyro's flamethrower. Also, if huh. Pyro wasn't in the inflaming category, I'd have been really sad. I mean, come on, it's not the fire category coming up. However, exactly. the king of making things go from bad to worse is Sniper. The yellow oh, master the karate flings it with reckless abandon. Making oh, more God. with another Bro. piece. Of Not only does the eponymously titled weapon utilize the stuff, but the rifle the Sydney Sleeper will coach you in it from long range. So now both Pyro and Sniper are getting up there in terms of violations of human rights. Chemical warfare is up next. Putting somebody oh, through the periodic table is a big no-no, and there are only two mercenaries who this applies to. Pyro is getting called back into the principal's office again as a repeat offender, as the gas of the gas passer is a mm. chemical and illegal. However, that chemical doesn't weapon. hold a candle to the real master of chemical warfare. See, the medic uses a variety of chemicals in order to utilize his strongest maneuver, the Uber Charge. He'd be lucky if Meet the Medic was all that existed to explain the origins of Uber Charge, but sadly, NATO leaked the original work in progress, Meet the Medic, where we see the concoction that keeps these junkies on the battlefield. So whatever, Uber Charge is breaking a few international laws. It's not like he's got a bunch of weapons tied to it, right? How many? So that means uh, every uh, single one of Medic's weapons tied to Uber is in some way a war crime. That means every Metagun, the Uber Saw, the Vita Saw, Overdose, and Amputator are all grave breaches of international law. Because of that, Medic shoots way past everyone else, making them look less like hmm. this and more like this. If you thought the last <laughs> section might have been a bit of targeted bullying, wait till you hear about this one. Anti-personnel landmines, hell? you already know where this is going, are oh, outlawed God. in combat. Being a bomb meant specifically to injure or kill a person is a no-go. Now, is there any class you can think of that uses bombs to kill people in particular? Well, Kaboom! Yes, I think one. <laughs> Scout! Yes, in the official definition of anti-personnel landmines, they include a description that talks about bombs meant to disperse broken glass along with shrapnel. Oh! Like the broken glass that the RAF assassin launches when it hits an opponent with a bulb! Now, who'd have thought that that little speedster could have snuck in a shot in a section meant for Demo Man? Mm. Yeah, so you can probably guess Demo Man is kind of the star of this part of the list, as sticky bombs by their nature are anti-personnel landmines. Considering they also damage buildings, though, you might be tempted to give them a break, but no such luck. The primary purpose of these things is to turn people into chunks. That means the sticky bomb launcher, Scottish resistance, Wait, and does that mean a claymore is an illegal Demo weapon? Hot water. You may also be asking about the sticky jumper, but that actually can't deal damage to enemies, so it's not yeah. anti-personnel. <clears throat> Use it all you want, Demo! There are three other examples I want to go over for the sake of being a pedantic jerk, however. The Iron Bomber is a primary grenade launcher meant to have a low-roll limited range bomb. So it fires bombs that don't explode very far and stay still when planted. Kind of like a mine! 
the tier two wiki even refers to the strategy as such, so I don't feel bad about this one. And why not? The bottles Demo Man has can break and would leave glass. My list, my war crimes. Maybe okay. don't try and glass people in a war <laughs> zone next time. Next up is nuclear armaments. Obviously, Wait, it's not very kosher to try to nuke people, especially with a weapon you can hold in your hands without protective gear. Uh, not like they're going to live long enough to feel the effects anyway. <laughs> so you may be asking what nuclear weapons there are in TF2. To think the answer here. is one that I kind of had to play with. So we know for a fact that the Gord bot weapons like the Calmangler and Pompson are indeed nuclear weapons, but they seem to be the only ones that mention that fact. However, because of the weapon's special property that they disintegrate whatever they kill, <laughs> I'm willing to extend the definition that any weapon that causes a disintegration is a nuclear weapon. Huh. With that information, please let me know. What class do you think has the most nuclear arms? Would it be the hysteric and crazed soldier? The man of mm. science medic? <clears throat> pyro because... Well, it would probably be Pyro? Because Pyro? What about... Yo, what's up? That's right, Scout has six unique... Or, I suppose, sort of unique weapons. Let me mm. explain. So, in terms of the disintegrators, that includes Scout's capper and the Beat Saber, as well as oh. all three of his drinks, the Bonk, Criticola and Mad Milk are either drinks that have been irradiated or made with radiation. And if you know Scout's loadout, you know that the soda popper is a force of nature that's had a can of Criticola taped to it, making huh. it by extension a radioactive weapon. Soldier, you'd expect to be dumb enough to have a nuclear weapon only has two in the form of the Cow Mangler and Righteous Bison. Pyro is in a similar boat where the very innocuously named Man Melter ends up melting men, as well as the Phlogistonator. Oh. Fans of WM1 Pyro are in shambles by this news. Engineer, <laughs> like I said, has the pomps and, and shares Scout's capper. Oh, also, uh, the, the short circuit. I definitely include the short circuit. And I'm recording this on uh, on the Tuesday before the video goes up because I've heard about the short circuit. That this mm. is the enemies. Definitely didn't forget about that. Well, I'll love you all. And the sniper <laughs> is a variation on the Machina, the shooting star. Next is weapons that were made at home, and you have no oh, idea how bazooka. hard it was to judge this category. So if the rules of war were meant to help regulate combat in order to stop people from tearing each other apart like feral raccoons fighting over a wounded squirrel, a weapon that hasn't been approved <laughs> by any world government, much less military company, is a big <laughs> problem. But you see, it's not that easy. Basically, the problem I ran into is with weapons like the Backscratcher, Neon Annihilator, and Hippocrat's Oath. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, these aren't weapons. Do no weapons harm. Weapons being used as weapons, but does that count as a homemade weapon? Does huh. the misuse of a common object mean it's being remade into a weapon? Good I spent question. literal hours mulling over if it does or does not count. The decision I came to was that, yes, if the weapon was never intended to be used as a weapon of war, then it's something that would be illegal. With that being oh. said, starting off with Scout, we have the modified weapon of the Soda Popper. This one is easy because it's taking a weapon that is totally fine and just taping a can of illegal soda to it. Then you have to go to his melee weapons for the rest. The holy mackerel is just a oh fish God. wrapped up in a newspaper. Not only is it an illegal weapon, but it's also wasting food. The candy cane <laughs> and the rap assassin are both fun festive holiday accessories that the scout is using to beat people to death. And <laughs> the fact that the candy cane drops health packs made me almost not count it. But this was during like hour three of me figuring out if it was going to be counted or not. So it's going in. Soldier gets lumped in as well as the pain train is just a stick with a railroad spike and some nails put into it. Yeah. And in a rare in lore homemade weapon, the publicity blurb on the page of Zuka says that Soldier made it himself. The demo man not only has Soldier's pain train, but his bottles were never meant for combat, no matter what you hear from any given bar in Scotland. Yeah. His other weapons are even more interesting, though, as the Nessie's 9-iron is a piece of sporting equipment that just so happens to be the proper length necessary for a bludgeoning. Finally, the charge and charge is the only shield that isn't a shield. The other ones demo can use were all designed to be shields. The charge and charge in, well, part of the best demo loadout, hmm. isn't a real shield, just a ship wheel that he strapped to his arm. The Heavy made his weapon oh. at home in the most metal way possible by ripping the paws off a bear and strapping them to his own to make the warrior's spirit. <laughs> Before you Dude. ask, by the way, since we're at him, you're probably asking about NG's buildings. He says that they're designed by him, built by him, and by that logic, wouldn't that make them homemade? Well, no, because the buildings are simply his creation that he brings to the battlefield. He got his buildings officially licensed by Manco since they can be built from the PDA. That's like saying the man who invented okay. the AK-47 wouldn't be allowed to use it in battle. Yeah, for medic, sure. Oh. Like I said before, oh, God, what the? Uber, and you'd think I could make the same excuse for Medic that I just made oh. for Benji, right? Well, not quite. Since we see Medic make his Medigun, we have conclusive proof that he made it at home. Extension, you can probably say that all many guns and all uber weapons we mentioned before <laughs> are in the same boat as well. 
And on top of that, the bust I mentioned earlier, and Medic has That's kind of dumb, though, to make something like the so Medigun illegal, considering how helpful it would be in combat. Else after that display, but we're still talking about it. The Razorback is a shield that has a car battery attached to it. The Cozy Camper is just his backpack from his first day at school. And the Gerardi is most certainly homemade. <laughs> so that spy has one item from home. That Ooh. being the bit of ice hanging on his rearview mirrors from his card that now he's aligning spines with. And that's all the classes. I mean, I mean, there's one other one, but like, it's, it's not even a big deal. Like, who even plays him? Not me, obviously. Like, I don't, I probably don't have like zero hours put in that character. So let's just... Move right along, and okay, you got me. I skipped Pyro. So oh, okay. this is a case like the Beggar's Bazooka, where we have in-universe confirmation that the Pyro uses a homemade flamethrower. That's bad enough on its own, but what's mm. worse is that his other flamethrowers are variations on the original flamethrower, and that means they're modifications of the original homemade flamethrower. In total, for his primaries alone, the flamethrower, degreaser, and backburner are all automatically big no-nos. But that's mm. not all. Nostromo's napalmer is a double whammy. Not only does it fire napalm, as the name suggests, but the weapon itself is based on a flamethrower from Aliens, which in and of itself was homemade. <laughs> Even the rainblower. Oh. The rainblower is a weapon Pyro made in his imagination. The flog in his imagination. Escaped this category by virtue of looking too well made for Pyro to have made them himself. But that's not all. Heavens, no. On top of his primaries, he has the detonator, which is a modified flare gun, and his melee weapons. Oh God, his melee weapons. <laughs> axe extinguisher, an axe wrapped in barbed wire, power jack. A car battery, oh, and yeah, neon annihilator, back scratcher, postal punisher, all stuff he just picked up off the ground. The lolly chump isn't even real. So, yeah, what about the home wrecker? Making a massive problem for himself because he just won't let people make weapons for him. But at least now, after all this funky weapon shenanigans, we can get on to the final. Uh oh, oh my god, the new TF2 update. Oh my god, there it is. They haven't updated yeah, this right. game in half a decade, but it's finally here! Finally, let me see the changes! Okay, oh yeah, they made the sharpened volcano fragment deal 100% more damage to spies cloaked as other spies. Nice, nice! Oh, they made the lock and load make every demo man who uses it have a limb, so they actually need that crutch! Oh, thank God, oh yeah! Incendiary weapons are outlawed in the world. Oh God, oh man, oh God, oh man, oh God, oh man, oh God, oh man! Oh man. Uh, there are a few different weapons that are affected by this change. For instance, the 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 the, the Hulong heater creates a ring of fire around there the you enemy. Go. Gotta keep those pesky spies away. Kind of like the pi 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 particular weapon used by the soldier. Cow mangler can inflict afterburn, which means it's incendiary and therefore counts as a fire. That's only the, that's only the overcharge. Uh, uh, weapon like the huntsman who can have its arrows set on fire with the torches in the environment and the oh uh, okay fine let's just that's talk cool about pyro. so it would be kind of to go uh, weapons this yeah yeah if you uh, uh, build uh, all these parameters uh, pyro would not have a primary you only have the shotguns jetpack and gas pass to use as secondaries which is both redundant and insulting and worst of all, you would lose access to the sharpened volcano fragment. I don't want to live in a world where that's happening. <laughs> Just like the last category, Pyro has 12 weapons that break the rules of warfare, giving him more crap. crimes than at least one category <laughs> than some mercs have overall. Damn, Pyro! A psychopath. I mean, not like the other psychopaths, like a psychopath. Do you believe in magic? So while the weapons have been thoroughly combed through, there is one more section of the TF2 universe that I feel like has ripe potential for crimes. TF2 universe? And no, I'm oh, not God. talking about the fact that they're unfinished, which is a crime in and of itself. Yes. Valve, stop making technology that people outmo within 20 minutes of getting and make a game, any game. Yeah. I. That doesn't count and you know it. Thankfully, yeah. someone else has taken a break from blowing bubbles with their spit long enough to think up the same idea, and Sir Reginald the Third on Reddit has gone through painstaking detail to count the crimes across the comic, and I'll present them to you now. Oh, God. Scout has been known to stalk and make advances on women, including girls on the track team for a high school he did not go to while being over 18, and they were under 18. This was a video. Let's watch him die again. <laughs> He's also <laughs> guilty in assisting of the murder of Santa Claus, which it's kind of funny to hold this one murder to higher scrutiny than the other one. That wasn't Santa, that was, uh, what's his name, uh, old, old Nick? Under, I'm gonna raise some hell about it! And he also mentions that the mad milk isn't milk, and it could count as sexual assault, but I refuse to think that Scout oh my God. love custard at his opponents. Uh, possibly uh, in the least 
stock closets to refill that thing. Soldier. Genocide. Wait, 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 wait. genocide? Hell, he's one guy! <laughs> well, following World War II, Soldier went to Germany to eliminate Nazi scum. But it seems he wasn't ever told that not every single German person was a Nazi and began indiscriminately murdering civilians. Dude! Since he was exclusively targeting the Germans, this falls under the purview of genocide. Dude. Breaking and entering into Tom Jones's house, as well as the murder of Tom Jones for yep. murdering Tom Jones. He also assisted in the gangland assassination of Father Christmas. Pyro. That wasn't Did Father Christmas, dude. That was Pyro old Nick. They have set something on fire. That's mainly down to them having Things. been diagnosed as a pyromaniac, meaning that they would have had to have set something on fire in order to get that distinction. Demo man. Doesn't have too much actually. The worst you have him down for is public intoxication. Same with heavy. As long as you don't count escaping the Russian gulag that he was trapped in and murdering all the guards, thus we don't. The all right. Russia. For the time that the game is taking place, in though, I'm pretty sure that's a net positive. However, being a Russian at all does mean that history is grumpy as Grandpa John McCarthy will slam it with a signature move, McCarthyism, landing him at least five years in jail. Engineer is the most boring class to play. Crime of corporate espionage. Just stole yeah. some weapons from Blue Man. Oh, boo hoo, boring. Moving on. Medic. Well, well, we don't even have to go into the crimes against and nature. It's to losing his medical license and is therefore illegally practicing medicine. <laughs> I also guess that negates the point from the beginning where you can't fire on the medic. Gun him down all you want. He's also yeah, it does actually stolen goods as he's in possession of every other merc's souls. <laughs> black market goods like his immortal human soul, his wide variety of animal parts were no doubt gotten through illegal means. Including also, endangered species animal parts. Random thug and turned him into a pumpkin. <laughs> Somehow the pumpkin part is totally above board, but the kidnapping is disgusting. Sniper <laughs> is a lot of things, but a crazed gunman is not one of them. He's an yeah. assassin. And he probably shouldn't have admitted that since that's a big crime what? to kill. What's a job and the other one's mental sickness? Homemade boo since he slips demo man his own homemade moonshine. Else, sniper is making in those jars. I wouldn't drink it regardless. Mm. Speaking of that, dousing someone with your own piss no doubt falls under indecent uh, exposure as uh, well as public indecency. It's also nasty. no wonder that his parents are disappointed in him. He's wanted for attempted murder rather than flat out murder, as he doesn't mm. succeed in killing this Pauling and Devil when they come to find him. Finally, he could have, though. Spy, another contract killer who not oh. only kills for money but also in self defense when he gets sent to prison. He steals intelligence from both red and blue team, threatens to murder a judge, launders money, and Dude. one of the key items the disguise kit allows him to impersonate anybody and steal their identities. Yeah, that's identity theft. Tom Jones, and as a result, mm. Tom Jones, or rather the state of Tom Jones, would have grounds for the misuse of his image. The estate of Tom Jones. <laughs> now it's time for the main event. Which uh -oh. of these men will die in prison? Starting off with the lowest and going up, 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 last place with only six crimes is heavy. Assuming he gets the minimum mm. sentence that makes sense. Crime, which is 20 years, that means he's got a 120 year sentencing ahead of him. After him is NG with eight crimes, landing him 160 years. Mm. After him is inexplicably spy with only 10 crimes and a clean 200 years. Makes sense, his job is to not get caught, and he wasn't caught. He True. surprising his soldier with only 14 crimes and 280 years in prison. The next three have 15, 16, and 17 crimes each. Really? Dillman and does soldier. Each getting 300. So scout? Really? 40 years in jail, respectively. Then with a wow. shattering 25 it's crimes. Soldier's so low. Medic, who manages to get sent to for the next 500 years? <laughs> medic is really high. The massive 35 war crimes <laughs> is Pyro. Pyro. Who will Pyro's go to number for one. 700 years up all that jail time and assuming they don't get the death penalty the mercs will be in jail for a combined 2920 years or as some of you may have noted more time that has passed since the birth of jesus christ <laughs> oh my god oh man so it was pyro though he didn't cover everything that medic has done and he didn't cover even everything. And that whole thing about, oh, yeah, he murdered Father Christmas. No, he didn't, dude. That was old Nick. That wasn't Santa. And that guy was an an asshole who was kidnapping children. So what they do, what they did was a good thing. You know, it was technically self-defense. So there's a huge flaw right there in his reasoning. I'm just putting that out there. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Ah, yes. Pyro wins again. <laughs> yes, I take pride in this. Anyway...
Hope you guys enjoyed that. Like this video and subscribe, guys. <laughs> of course, click on the link to the original down in the description. Get down to what's name? Oh yeah, Bumble McFumble's channel. Like the original, sub to him over there. I will see you guys next time. Tune in every day for new content. Bye-bye. <laughs>